Rabindranath Tagore received Nobel Prize for his poetry. He was a playwright, essayist, storyteller, and a composer of music. In his long life, he had also contributed extensively to different social causes, including the formation of an academic institution named Vishwavarati. Much travelled, much adored, and much maligned, the poet suddenly started painting at the age of 70. In almost no time, his painter self surfaced globally, initiating a debate about his sincerity as a curator, as much as his relevance as a painting artist. The passion for shapes and forms and colors had been so strong that Rabindranath made around 2,500 artworks before his death at the age of 80. There is a view that the poet started painting seriously in Buenos Aires, Argentina when he was staying as a guest of Madame Victoria Ocampo. The lady first noticed the doodles that the poet was making on manuscripts of poetry. She inspired him to carry the habit on and finally hosted a solo show of the works in Galerie Pigalle, Paris in 1930. The fact, however, is something else. In his early youth, when he was visiting Shirai Daho, a village on the banks of the river Padda, as the son of the landlord, he had carried a sketchbook and tried to depict the scenes. His experience of travels abroad exposed the poet to the treasures of world art, which also must have worked as an inspiration when he began painting. Rabindranath was a worshipper of rhythm and cadence. This is best reflected in his poetry and songs. For him to convert the deletion on paper into a rhythmic whole was only natural. While doing so, he discovered within himself a passion for imagistic visuals. Portraits including those of self, animals and strange creatures and nature scapes. The body of work is divided into three broad groups. Most fascinating perhaps, nature paintings. A collection of these is shown here to acquaint Tego lovers with the poet's extreme passion for unveiling the mystery and beauty of trees, leaves and flowers. Rabindranath had no pretensions about academic limitations as an artist. He had categorically told that an inner urge, maybe an abstract passion, was driving him. Techniques were immaterial. He often did a pencil sketch and then started pouring colored ink on it. For an instant effect, a drying medium was often 
poured into the ink. Brush was used. At times he used the sleeves of his robe to rub colors in a hurry. We have to judge Rabindranath, the painter, as an expressionist observer of life. His method of expression was not at all translatory. In a work of art, space is most important. His landscapes also have an impeccable space management. The blank space between trees enhances the feeling of solitude and silence. In case of flowers, he left almost no space. The poet was fond of secondary colors. Strong red, blue, etc. were out of the palette. Flowers in this series are rather dull yet vibrant. In case of the use of black, he was always liberal. We have to keep in mind that the whole process of production in his case was automatic and spontaneous. Associates have pointed out that the working process to him was intensive. He gave expression to whatever formed in mind. Often, whatever seemed physically relevant at the point of production. His creative mind was controlled, in case of painting, by a presentational immediacy. I don't want to give captions to my works. I myself don't know what was taking shape. Better to leave it to the viewer. Let him name it, he said. Rabindranath's fascination for female faces is also phenomenal. All of them are dark and somber. Same is the case with the self-portraits. A compulsive mystic peeps out of the face. The poet was indeed a mystic. After the Nobel Prize, he was viewed by the Western critics as an oriental mystic. As a painter, the poet had cultivated the theory of rhythm, which was the sole aim of all the arts that he had practiced. Avanindarat summarized the poet's paintings in the most credible way. He wrote, it was unique. His art was his very own. One cannot imitate it, nor can one explain it to one's satisfaction. Neither can the critic fit it into the set theory of his own or bring it under a distinct category. His art has something volcanic about it. His first exhibition in Paris elicited an enormous accolade. His art was a procession of forms. Meaning or explanation came much later. Chitrakut Art Gallery is fortunate to accumulate this set of the poet's last harvest through various private sources. One can view these in the gallery and sever the test of the poet's art. <laughs>